U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo spoke at an Atlantic Council front page event on September 15, pointing out that in recent months, China's predatory economic activity, coupled with its sneaky handling of the coronavirus pandemic, has awakened the world to the threat Beijing poses on the international community. The Atlantic Council invited Pompeo to one of its virtual meetings on Tuesday to discuss his recent trip to Europe and how European nations are awakening to the China challenge. Pompeo said that the United States needs to recognize that its China policies chosen in the 1970s must be changed to protect the security of American people. The most important group that we need to make the case for is to convince the American people of this threat and this challenge, he said adding that the Chinese communist regime has stolen tens of millions of jobs from the American people. Secondly, he stated that the United States needs to convince and partner with its international allies. In the past 70 or 80 years, the international community has dealt with the communist camp in two different ways. One is to bring communist regimes down economically, and the other is to help communist regimes get rich. Which of these two paths leads to success? Obviously, it was the downfall of the former Soviet Union. When the West bankrupted the Soviet Union economically, its citizens naturally rose up against the regime. The other path has undoubtedly turned out to be a failure. The way to deal with an evil communist regime is to completely bankrupt it. Then it is possible to disintegrate it. If you help this regime make more and more money, the final result is that it poses more and more of a threat to the international community. Pompeo said that in the past one and a half years, he has been all around the world talking to America's allies about what the Chinese Communist Party is doing to their people and to their country and to the threats that it poses to their sovereignty. And I must say, uh, it's been rewarding over the last six or eight months to watch the shift. The world has awakened. My view is that the tide has turned. Uh, I think whether it's uh, their recognition of the cover up that took place with respect to the Chinese virus, whether it's the predatory activity that's now failing, falling flat all across Africa. Um, I think these are powerful shifts, shifts in the world's view of the threat from the Chinese Communist Party. And I think. In addition, Pompeo said American business leaders now understand much more clearly the political risks associated with operating inside a country dominated and controlled by a single party, the Chinese Communist Party. During the CCP virus pandemic, the entire international community experienced firsthand the danger caused by the CCP's lies and deceptions. Moreover, upon seeing the CCP's suppression of human rights in Hong Kong and Xinjiang, the international community could envision that they themselves would be infiltrated and even enslaved by the CCP in the future. So they have felt an increasing urgency to resist the CCP's bullying and infiltration tactics. Pompeo also pointed out that the CCP has used its economic might and its market power of 1.4 billion people as the central tool to build out its hegemonic capacity. With this tool, the CCP thinks that American businesses cooperating with China will turn a blind eye to human rights violations in China. We may oppose things here. We may support groups here in the United States, but we're not going to do a thing to protect human rights inside China, Pompeo explained. He emphasized that Chinese leader Xi Jinping's slogan, National Rejuvenation, is actually Marxist-Leninist underpinnings of the Chinese Communist regime and the Chinese desire for hegemony. The United States has made a major strategic change. That is to say, it regards the CCP as the successor to the Stalin totalitarian system of the former Soviet Union and a new version of the Soviet Union that poses a fatal threat to the free democratic camp in the world. The harm of the CCP has even surpassed the Soviet Union back then. This strategic change is based on a bitter lesson learned by the United States from its misjudgment of the CCP. After the United States learned this lesson from first-hand experience, it has had a major impact on other countries all over the world. Tang Jingyuan mentioned that the international society is getting more and more clear on the threat and challenge posed by China. It is all about the CCP's value system, which completely contradicts that of the free world. We have seen that reciprocal strategy is becoming a widely accepted measure to counter the CCP. For example, at the recent EU-China summit, 
The European Union has also begun to take a tough stance with China, demanding the CCP stop its predatory economic activities, improve human rights, and fulfill its commitments in the international community, etc. All these indicate that the United States is leading the international community again and has begun a new Cold War. They are also a sign that many countries have made it into their policy to counter the CCP and are determined to fight a long-term battle with the CCP. Pompeo reiterated that America is a deeply moral nation and it has a set of founding principles upon which that morality is based. China using human rights language to cover up for the most unbelievable human rights violations is an enormous crisis in human rights in the 21st century. What's taking place in Western China is unrivaled in this century. I've called it the stain of the century. He said he hopes that moral foundations will guide U.S. officials to do well in American foreign policy and preserved human dignity.